Well, if you keep track of the happenings over at the American Ornithological Society, as I'm sure you do, then you already know all about the momentous announcement the organization made this week. But if for some reason you are not up to speed on the latest developments in the bird watching community, then uh, you may be in the dark about this. And in fact, just now hearing that there was some kind of significant event in the ornithology space, you're probably assuming that a major bird-related breakthrough has occurred. Has the American Ornithological Society discovered a new species of bird that will redefine society's expectations of what a bird can be? Or maybe they identified a new invasive bird that's going to destroy all the crops and bring about the end of civilization. Perhaps there's something more salacious happening in the avian world. Maybe Taylor Swift is dating a famous bird watcher. Maybe she's dating a bird. These are all logical guesses, but that is where the disappointment sets in. It turns out the big announcement uh, instead was this. After more than two years of deliberation, this bird society has decided that at long last, they're going to decolonize the hobby of bird watching in all related fields. And they're going to, to do that by changing the names of a few dozen birds. As USA Today reported without the slightest hint of irony or self-awareness, quote, Dozens of birds to be renamed in an effort to shun racism and make science more diverse. Now, after realizing how absurd that headline was, USA Today quickly changed it later in the day. And now the headline reads, quote, Dozens of birds, including ones named after white supremacists, are being renamed. The article goes on to explain that, quote, The society plans to remove all human names from the common names for birds within its jurisdiction to create a more inclusive environment for people of diverse backgrounds interested in bird watching and ornithology. The public process, yet to be fully defined, will include 70 to 80 birds in the U.S. and Canada, according to the society. The New York Times elaborated on the situation with their own article, quote, Advocates of this change believe that many English common names for birds are isolating and demeaning reminders of oppression, slavery, and genocide, according to a petition in 2020 that was addressed to the American Ornitholo Ornithological Society. The petition was written by Bird Names for Birds, an initiative founded by two ornithologists, to confront the issue of these bird names, which it describes as verbal statues. So they're going to tear down the verbal statues, just like they tore down the actual statues. And they'll make sure that no bird is named after a human, at least not any white human. And that means there will be no more McCown's long spur. That's a bird named after John P. McCown, who discovered it. But John P. John P. McCown uh, fought for the Confederacy, and he didn't want the Seminole Indians to rule Florida. So needless to say, the name of that particular bird needs to change. The Scots Oriole also needs a new identity because it was named after Winfield Scott, who relocated Indians in the 19th century in the so-called Trail of Tears. And of course, there are the, the birds named for John James Audubon, who basically created the whole field of modern ornithology. And that needs to change as well because he owns slaves. And that's a big problem for the Audubon's shearwater, which is a bird that lives off the coast of the southern United States, as I'm sure you know. Now, it goes without saying, of course, that these bird names... Um, have caused untold trauma for bird watchers and civilians alike. It's impossible to know just how many people have collapsed in shock and suffered heart attacks after learning that, uh, you know, a species of North American sparrow was named after an obscure Civil War general, or that a certain type of crow bears the name of a guy who owned slaves 265 years ago, or whatever. But we, all, but we also give less thought to the birds themselves, who uh, have for decades been saddled with these ostracizing names. And think of how difficult that must be for them. That's why the American Ornithological Society is getting rid of these genocidal names and instead using names that describe a bird's physical features. Now, granted, it's only a matter of time before that becomes a problem, too. Now, I can't think of any reason why the name Blackbird is racist, but I'm sure somebody will think of one. It just may take a while. Indeed, it took more than two years for these bird experts to make this decision to rename all these birds, and they still haven't renamed them, by the way. They've just confirmed that they're going to do it. If you run a small business, you need to plan ahead. One of the best ways to do that is by using Stamps.com for all your mailing and shipping needs. Stamps.com lets you print your own postage and shipping labels right from your own office or your home. Your shipping labels are ready to go in minutes, so you can uh, get back to running your business sooner. We don't waste time here at The Daily Wire. We've used Stamps.com since 2017. Our office management staff love Stamps.com because they don't have to spend hours at the post office. Stamps.com offers rates you can't find anywhere else, like up to 84% off USPS and UPS. Plus, they will automatically tell you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable to over 1 million businesses. You can print postage wherever you do business. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. They even send you a free scale so you'll have everything you need to get started. 
Set your business up for success. Get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code Walsh for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and free digital scale. No long-term commitment or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code Walsh. More than two years ago, the Washington Post published a deep dive into the field of bird watching, noting that many birds carry a, quote, racist legacy. And now, two years later, we have some results. Almost. This is how long the process takes to give birds more politically correct names. For comparison, it took less than three weeks to write the Declaration of Independence. But again, the Decla- but, uh, but then again, the Declaration of Independence is not nearly as important a document as the Declaration of Anti-Racist Bird Names from the American Ornithological Society. Now, if you want to know more about this laborious process of identifying the racist birds, and I'm sure you do, I have a clip uh, from the American Ornithological Society meeting two years ago where they first discussed this issue. The meeting was hosted by a woman named Amelia Juliet Demery, who's a member of the American Ornithological Society's Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And yes, the American Ornithological Society really does have a Diversity and Inclusion Committee. I'm not making that up. Somehow I'm not making any of this up. Now, if you thought that regular human Diversity and Inclusion Committees were useless, well, wait till you get a load of the, the Diversity and Inclusion Committee for birds. Now, actually, I must admit that uh, the video of this bird diversity meeting is two hours long, and I was not committed enough to endure more than a very short snippet. So I kind of just started at a random timestamp and watched for about 90 seconds, and this is the part that I saw. Watch. So I'm a professional communicator and talking about birds like Bachman sparrow are really challenging because it looks like another sparrow. Why should someone that doesn't think it's super cool care about this, this near threatened species, right? Well, if we could all get excited about, you know, we have to do this community education aspect to this campaign for it's now the most awesome sparrow instead of a sparrow that, represents a Lutheran pastor that talked about white supremacy, then that's really cool too. And maybe we can do really cool art and storytelling and get the community involved and talk about, again, the threats and conservation needs that birds have. Maybe we can talk about some of the stories and experiences that um, the bird community members that aren't represented today have with this bird and all of the other ones. I just think that it's exciting what our future could be especially because I think the biggest opportunity is that this could be our chance to have a concrete statement, say the tendrils of all social justice have reached to the point of bird names and we're going to do something about it. No, it won't end racism. It won't fix colonialism, but it's something that we can do right now today as our community. And the bird community is so big. The impact of this could be massive. That is the saddest video I've ever seen in my life. I find it sad on such a deep level. It's hard to even express. Now, a couple of things here. I, I, I am not going to say anything about the guy on the lower right-hand corner. Uh, I, I, well, I did just say something about him, but I'm not going to say anything else. All I will say is that he's exactly what you imagine when you hear that bird watchers have a diversity and inclusion committee. Somehow that guy in particular manifests in your mind before you even see him. And, uh, and that's all I'm going to say. Also, this fact may interest only me, but I want you to know that the title of this video on YouTube is AOS Community Congress on English Bird Names. It is, as mentioned, two hours long. It's been on YouTube for two years and it has 1,700 views, and it's monetized. They are running ads on that video. I don't know what profit potential they thought this content had, but I hope that it lived up to those expectations. In any case, this is big stuff, the lady says. This is massive. This is major. They are changing bird names. Sure, sure, she acknowledged it won't end racism. It won't fix colonialism. It won't usher in a progressive utopia on its own. It will only get us like 95% of the way there. To get us the rest of the way, we're going to have to rename a bunch of racist insects and bugs too. But that would require those slackers in the entomological society to get their act together finally and confront this problem, and it's about time for that. But the bird lady uh, did say one thing worth thinking about. She said, with great pride, that the tendrils of social justice have reached bird names. 
That is indeed how pervasive wokeness has become. It has reached into every corner of society and infected every institution, even organizations of bird watchers. The revolution demands total compliance everywhere, among everyone. Even birds are not exempt. Everything must be brought into conformity. Everything must be changed, redefined, renamed. That is the dark reality underpinning this otherwise absurd and unintentionally hilarious story. But we don't need to focus on that for now. Instead, let's just point and laugh at this because sometimes that's all you can do or should do. And we can also say to the American Ornithological Society what I never thought we'd have to say to the American Ornithological Society because, frankly, I never thought we'd have to say anything to the American Ornithological Society. You are today canceled. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.